Imagine buying a car and then the manufacturer updates it so that the car starts making decisions for you. You start it up in the morning and it tells you, no, I'm not going to let you drive your usual route to work because I've determined a better route that's faster, saves you on some gas. Oh, and by the way, it also doesn't take you through your favorite drive through for breakfast because your car is determined that you need to lose some weight. It sounds really creepy, but this is essentially the future that Windows users can look forward to because Microsoft is turning Windows into an agentic OS, a canvas that's optimized for artificial intelligence instead of any real human productivity or leisure. Of course, nobody asked for this, but then again, nobody really asked for Windows 11 in the first place. It's just the only operating system that Microsoft officially supports, so a lot of people are stuck with it, OneDrive prompts and all. The core features of Windows, the things that people actually use the OS for, have been getting worse and worse over time. Last month, Microsoft rolled out the October 2025 update, and people started to notice that they were getting worse performance in a lot of their games like Black Ops 7, Battlefield 6, and Ark Raiders. The update literally reduced graphics card performance by up to 65% for people using NVIDIA cards because Microsoft values AI slop more than your gameplay. I personally remember when Windows 10 first came out, and back then I was dual booting between it and Linux because the gaming performance was actually so much better in Windows 10, so much better that running Microsoft spyware was actually worth the frame rate gains for me. But gaming performance on Windows 11 seems like it's pretty much consistently worse than on Windows 10. And now you don't just have to deal with big tech tracking you for the purposes of advertising, but now their AI is training itself on every document, every picture, every video, really any kind of data that you put through a Windows OS. Some people are taking notice though, because desktop Linux is increasing in popularity. Zorin OS, for example, had over 1 million downloads in just over a month after Zorin OS 18 was released, and apparently over 78% of those downloads were from people running Windows. So a lot of people are making the switch, and with Zorin OS 18, they're actually putting a lot of effort into making that switch easier. They've added seamless integration with web apps, and we've looked at this in other distros before, and really you can do this on pretty much any OS, but the idea is, because there's no native offline version of Office 365 available for Linux, Zorin OS ships with this web apps feature that makes it easier for you to create a shortcut to those online Office 360 apps or really any online app that you want to use that doesn't have a native Linux version. And I guess the upside to all of this cloud-centric application stuff is that there's OS agnostic online versions of them. And as long as you have high speed internet and it's reliable, there's relatively little performance difference between the online apps and the native ones running locally on your computer. I also noticed that Zorin OS 18 ships with the Brave browser. So the 1 million or so people that downloaded Zorin to try it out probably also got exposed to a better web browsing experience with built-in ad blocking. And I would imagine that switching from Edge to Brave, since they're both Chromium-based browsers, might be a little bit easier for someone than switching from Edge to Firefox, which is what most desktop Linux distros ship with these days. Zorin OS 18 also has this online account integration feature. So again, if you've been lulled into the comfort of the cloud by Google or Microsoft, you could take that comfort with you over to your Linux desktop and go on enjoying all of your cloud data and apps. They also redid their desktop a little bit. They added more polish and added this advanced window tiling option so that you can have more granular control over how you line up your windows next to one another. And you don't have to worry about editing the source code of your window manager or a configuration file. You've got a pretty straightforward user interface here to configure everything, to maximize your productivity. And this is another switch to Linux feature that I really like. And I would like to see it more in more beginner distros the suggested alternatives for apps feature. So if you've ever done a fresh install of Windows, you probably made a backup first of all your setup.exe files for the programs that you want to install so that you don't have to revisit a bunch of different websites and download them again. Well, if you try to run those setup.exe files in Zorin OS, obviously it's not gonna work, but instead of just getting some confusing error message, 
they tell you straight up that you can use LibreOffice as an alternative or you can use Office 365 on the web. So they're able to identify the EXEs and recommend Linux compatible alternatives to you. I believe this works with up to 170 different programs right now. And for Windows apps, there's also the option to install Windows app support, which is basically just a wrapper for wine and bottles, two other great pieces of software that provide a compatibility layer to run a lot of Windows programs on Linux. Now getting back to the subject of gaming, Microsoft obviously isn't prioritizing performance that much. They've basically left that ball in NVIDIA's court to fix their drivers. But over in the Linux world, there are developers that are really focused on gaming performance. Bazite is another Linux distro that is built primarily for gaming, and Gamers Nexus actually did a really good video benchmarking it with multiple games and graphics cards to give you a good idea of Linux gaming performance across those different setups. And this gaming distro, out of the box, seems to be on par or better than Windows 11. And I don't know how much gamer culture has shifted back when I was more involved in it, but you know, back in my day, <laughs> gamers were much more willing to tinker with their hardware and software setups in order to squeeze as much performance out of their games as possible. And since Microsoft is dumbing down the OS to the point where the AI agents basically run anything, there just isn't much to do in terms of performance tinkering. Well, over in the Linux world, oh, there's pretty much no limit to it. And these days, you don't even necessarily have to take that deep plunge into installing an OS like Gentoo with optimized compiler flags for your kernel and programs in order to squeeze out a few more frames per second or a few more percentage points of performance. No, the developers of Catchy OS, for example, they've already done all of that for you. And the best thing about it is that Catchy OS is an Arch-based Linux system, same base as SteamOS 2.0, which is the main distro that I would expect game developers to be targeting or at least testing their games on. Now, you might be thinking that if Microsoft loses enough of their gamer base and as a result, enough of their market share, that they might start reining things in and fixing their OS, but they may have gone too deep down the AI rabbit hole to pull back now. The main issue that I think is causing all the terrible performance in Windows besides AI being prioritized for compute resources is the fact that something like 30% of Microsoft's repos are vibe coded to some extent. And it makes sense when you compare the performance of Windows 11 to Windows 10, because that was the last fully human coded OS that Microsoft has produced. And it shows, like it really shows in the performance differences. But even if Microsoft's engineers somehow manage to hammer out all of these new bugs that are being introduced by their hallucinating AI, the company still owns something like 25% of open AI. And so the agentic OS, it isn't just a result of technical decisions, but financial ones as well. So hopefully more Windows users run into Linux users in their online game lobbies and learn about the extra edge that they can get when you install an operating system that is actually designed for people to use. If you enjoyed this video, please like and share it to hack the algorithm and check out my online store, base.win, where you can get awesome merch like this Libre t-shirt or accessories for your phone or laptop. 10% store-wide discount when you pay with Monero XMR at checkout. Have a great rest of your day and Happy Thanksgiving.